And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I've made it pretty clear over the year that I'm getting a little tired of zombie games. Uh, it seems like everyone and their mother is making one these days. So I, ha I can't say that I was super pleased to get Zombie Pox Save the People, but always willing to give something a try. And I was kind of surprised when I looked at the back of this one. It has the 1950s artwork you can see here. Uh, the zombies. This isn't a very scary looking zombies. These are zombies chasing some people. Uh, and also that this game can be played solitaire or can be played with other people. It's a cooperative zombie game. Okay, well that's nothing new. But this is different. Uh, the best way to explain it is to show you how it's played. Alright, so here's the game which takes place on a large, I call these mouse pad mats, okay, rubber mats here. And you can see on here there's lots of different people. Uh, each of these people has a different facial characteristic and you can see that several of them are the same. And that matters because some cards will refer to those people. Uh, two of the folks start out as zombies, here they are surrounded, and then there's these babies that are around the place. And these babies are not really babies. They're vulnerable people. Although, <laughs> you know, uh, we often talk about how babies can become zombies. Now, if someone turns into a zombie, a, a green chip will be placed on them. If someone is vaccinated, which makes them uh, not able to be taken over by a zombie, a red chip is put on them. It's a little odd. I understand that green uh, means zombie, but red seems like an odd choice for being vaccinated because you would think that Red is a bad, it usually is in games. So what you do on your turn is you're gonna turn the top card of the zombie pox over. So this one, for example, says spread. Each zombie will infect the person next to them and you will always orient the cards towards you. So this would be put towards me and then each of these zombies would infect the person next to him. Unless, of course, that person was vaccinated and then they would be fine. Then I can either vaccinate three people so I might say I'm going to vaccinate these three people here. Or I can vaccinate an infected person, one person. So I could take one of these off and put one down. It would be my choice as to what, what to do. And then the next person might get spread. And if they're sitting across the table from me, the spread would go to both of these spots. So the, these two would be infected, as would be these two and this person here because the infected people will continue to spread. And then they would also have the same opportunity that I did to put down three of the red chips or to replace a green chip with a red chip. Other cards will show outbreak and one of the persons. Here's Suki uh, and or maybe you would get uh, Mary or maybe you would get, uh, I don't know, uh, there's uh, here's Jeff. We always laugh when Jeff gets bit. I don't know why. But when that happens, I have to put an infection on a picture of Jeff, but only if he's next to uninfected, unvaccinated people. So, if I got that, one of the Jeffs on the board has to be infected. But I can't pick this one because he's next to a zombie. And I can't pick this one because he's next to a zombie. And if there was a vaccinated person, I couldn't put him next to that vaccinated person either. So somewhere, if there's a Jeff. Now, it's possible... As especially as the game comes to near the end, that there is no legal place to put that. At that point, you can breathe a sigh of relief. Now, we start with these two zombies on the board, but if anyone is ever completely surrounded by zombies, like this gentleman here, we will take that off, and that person becomes a full-fledged zombie. And the reason you don't want that to happen is because if a certain number of zombies gets on the board, depending on how many uh, you want to play with, then you lose the game. There's six of these zombie chips here. If one of these little chaps, these vulnerable people, gets infected, they automatically just become a zombie. So you must do your best to protect them, and they can never have, uh, they can never be immunized. So uh, they're not allowed to, that's not allowed to happen to them. And so that's, that's essentially the game. It's not a difficult game. You're just going to go through this deck, turn over the cards, and do your best to contain the green as it spreads to the point where it can't spread anymore. And if people turn into zombies on, along the way, so, so be it. But at the same time, you want to make sure that, that you don't need to place one of these zombie chips. Because if you do and you don't have any, you've lost the game.
and that's how it's played. So you can see after, after me doing that, that this is essentially a cooperative abstract game. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah, sure, the zombie theme is there, but it's not. It's almost like we're playing a cooperative version of maybe Go. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to demean Go in any way. I know Go is a very thinky game. This game is not so much, but you're really trying to set the red chips up basically to block the green chips. How can I do that? Is it best to remove a green chip and put one red chip, or is it best to put three red chips to try and block it off? And just when you think you have the outbreak contained, one of these other ones will pop up somewhere on the board, and then you have to contain that one or not. When it comes down to it, the, the luck of the draw of the cards is probably going to determine whether you lose a game or not, I think. And since you're working together, everyone can say, okay, here's where we should put the chips and put them down. But it's kind of just, how do the cards work? That being said, I didn't dislike the game. I thought it was a pretty interesting game. First of all, it's fairly short. Secondly, it's different. I didn't feel like this, ah, oh, get the shotgun, go out and blow zombies. And if that's what you're looking for, then don't get this. Because that is not the feel of this game at all. It, this game is more of a puzzle type game. And I could, this could have been a, a game of chicken pox for, for all that the, the, the theme puts into the game. Or, you know, stop the spread of, of robots or, or whatever. You know, it, it could have been anything. But essentially, it's just, you know, how are we best going to contain these red chips as they grow, keeping them away from the vulnerable people and such. And there, you'll play games of this where you just lose. There's nothing you can do about it. The, the way the cards turn over, zombies show up very quickly. You can't protect people fast enough. And, and that's fine because it's a quick game. And you can also, like I said at the beginning, you can play it solitaire. It's one to four players. And playing it one player isn't a horrible thing. It's You just sit there and, and it's kind of like a little puzzle as you block the stuff off. And for that reason, I think that some people will get a kick out of this. And I think that hopefully after watching this video, you can see if this is right for you. Actually, I enjoyed it. So I was kind of surprised at that, but not everyone that I played it with was so enamored with it. They thought it was kind of stupid. Some people did. Others thought it was an interesting exercise. So um, is zombie pox for you? If you're looking for a full-fledged zombie game with shattered limbs and screaming people, uh, then no. But if you're looking for kind of a cooperative, puzzly type game, uh, which is a lighter version of the kind of uh, area control that uh, was in it, uh, uh, instituted in Go, then perhaps this would be what you're looking for. Either way, I think the box cover is cool. Zombie Pox. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Boom.